10 Facts You Didn't Know About Wimbledon Wimbledon, the pinnacle of tennis glory, holds a special place in the hearts of fans worldwide. It's the coveted tournament that every player dreams of winning. From intriguing traditions to incredible records, from captivating rivalries to mind-blowing facts, we bring you 10 surprising facts that will deepen your appreciation for this iconic event. Royalty once graced the Wimbledon court. Back in 1926, something extraordinary happened at Wimbledon that still has tennis enthusiasts talking to this day. The Duke of York, who would later become King George VI, decided to ditch the royal box and compete in the men's doubles tournament. Now, how did he end up there, you ask? Well, it was all thanks to his mentor and advisor, Sir Lewis Greek. This guy had just won the Royal Air Force's tennis championship and snagged himself a spot at Wimbledon. And you know what? He chose the future king as his doubles partner. So the big day arrives and they face off against Arthur Gore and Herbert Roper Barrett, two highly skilled British players. Now, you might think these guys would show some respect to royalty, but nope. They played like there's no tomorrow, smashing Grieg and the Duke in three straight sets, 6-1, 6-3, 6-2. Ouch, that's quite the defeat. King George VI remains the only royal to have ever competed at Wimbledon. Wimbledon was first staged to pay for croquet equipment. In the early days of the All England Club, the sport of croquet reigned supreme. When the club was founded in 1868, it was all about croquet, with no sign of tennis in sight. But things were about to change, and history was about to be made. Fast forward to 1875, and the first rumblings of change began to emerge. Lawn tennis made its grand entrance at the All England Croquet Club, setting the stage for a new era of sporting excitement. However, the shift wasn't instantaneous. It wasn't until 1877 that the club decided to host its first tennis championships. But why? Well, here's the interesting twist. The purpose of these championships wasn't solely to showcase the sport of tennis. No, they had a more practical goal in mind. The club needed funds to purchase a pony-drawn roller for their croquet lawns, so they cleverly organized the tennis championships as a means to raise the necessary money. Little did they know that this seemingly small endeavor would have far-reaching consequences. As it turned out, tennis quickly captured the hearts and enthusiasm of the members, overshadowing the once popular croquet. The grassy patches that were once reserved for the gentle thwack of croquet mallets were soon taken over by the energetic rallies of tennis players. By 1882, the All England Club decided to embrace this transformation wholeheartedly. Wimbledon's first champion said tennis was boring. In 1877, during the first Wimbledon Championship, the final match was plagued by persistent rain, causing delays that must have tested the patience of both players and spectators. Yet, when the skies finally cleared, Spencer Gore wasted no time in showcasing his skill and determination. In under 50 minutes, he sealed the victory, leaving the 200-strong audience in awe of his prowess on the court. You'd think that such a triumph would ignite an undying passion for the sport. But not for Gore. Surprisingly, he didn't share the same enthusiasm for tennis as he did for other pastimes. Despite his proficiency on the court, he confessed his true feelings, declaring, Lawn tennis is a bit boring. It will never catch on. Imagine the first Wimbledon champion expressing doubt about the future of the sport that would later become one of the world's most beloved games. In his heart, Gore found tennis monotonous compared to another passion of his, cricket. He found the elegant dance of the cricket bat and the thrill of the cricket pitch far more captivating. Little did he know that his victory at Wimbledon that day would become an essential part of tennis history and lay the foundation for a tournament that would capture the hearts of millions worldwide. Until 1922, defending champions received automatic berths in the finals. From 1877 through 1921, reigning champions enjoyed a rather advantageous perk. Once crowned, they were automatically granted a coveted spot in the finals, while the rest of the field fought tooth and nail to earn their place. Imagine the thrill of being the reigning champion, knowing that your journey to the finals was significantly eased. While other players battled it out in grueling matches, you could rest assured knowing that your spot in the ultimate showdown was secured. It must have been a remarkable feeling. However, as time went on, the rules of Wimbledon underwent a transformation. 
the era of automatic berths for defending champions came to an end in 1922, signaling a new era of parity and level playing fields. This change meant that even the reigning champions would need to conquer the same arduous journey as every other competitor in order to secure their titles once again. The longest ever Wimbledon match lasted for over 11 hours. The epic encounter between John Isner and Nicholas Mahu at the 2010 Wimbledon will forever be etched in the annals of tennis history. This remarkable match unfolded over the course of three grueling days on Court 18 capturing the attention and admiration of fans worldwide. The match began on June 22, 2010, with Isner and Mahu battling fiercely. They played four sets before play was suspended due to fading daylight. Undeterred, they resumed the following day, stepping onto the court to embark on an unprecedented journey in the fifth set. The intensity reached unimaginable heights as the match pushed into uncharted territory. The electronic scoreboard itself could not keep up, ceasing to function at 47-47 in the fifth set. Isner and Mahu continued to push the boundaries, serving over 100 aces each and astonishingly holding serve for an astounding 168 consecutive games. Finally, after an exhausting 11 hours and 5 minutes of play, Isner emerged victorious, clinching the historic match with a scoreline of 6-4, 3-6, 6-7, 7-6, 70-68. The fifth set alone lasted an astonishing 8 hours and 11 minutes. Such was the significance of this extraordinary encounter that a plaque was placed outside Court 18 to commemorate their feat. Players have a strict dress code. Just like a school uniform, the championships have a strict dress code that leaves no room for sartorial rebellion. The rules at Wimbledon are clear and unwavering players must be adorned in almost entirely white from head to toe. It's a tradition that has been upheld for years, adding an air of elegance and uniformity to the prestigious tournament. The umpires take their role as guardians of this dress code seriously, unafraid to step in and enforce it when necessary. In 2013, even the mighty Roger Federer, a true Wimbledon superstar, found himself at the mercy of the dress code. His vibrant orange-soled trainers caught the attention of the discerning umpires who deemed them to be in violation of the rules. With a flicker of disappointment, Federer gracefully accepted the decision and swapped his beloved sneakers for a pair that met the Wimbledon standard. Serena and Venus Williams were not the first siblings to meet in a Wimbledon final. Sibling rivalry in Wimbledon took center stage long before the Williams sisters graced the prestigious courts. Ernest and William Renshaw, a pair of British twins, held sway over the tennis world during what became known as the Renshaw Rush. In the 1880s, the Renshaw brothers forged an indomitable partnership, securing an impressive tally of five doubles titles at Wimbledon. William, in particular, stood out as a force to be reckoned with, going on with an extraordinary winning streak. Between 1881 and 1886, he achieved an unprecedented feat claiming a record six consecutive singles titles. But here's the real twist. Among these victories, William found himself facing off against none other than his own brother, Ernest, on three separate occasions in the Wimbledon finals. Can you imagine the intensity and emotions that must have accompanied such clashes? It was a battle not only for the coveted Wimbledon crown, but also for family supremacy on the hallowed grass. For 77 years, a British man did not win Wimbledon. For decades, the lush green lawns of Wimbledon seemed to conspire against the hopes and dreams of British male tennis players. Back in 1936, Perry had etched his name in Wimbledon history, securing the prestigious gentleman's singles titles for the third consecutive time. But little did he know that his triumph would mark the end of an era, setting the stage for a daunting 77-year drought. Year after year, the Wimbledon grass seemed to favor players from distant shores, leaving the passionate home crowd yearning for a champion to call their own. But then, in 2013, a seismic shift occurred. The remarkable Andy Murray, fueled by a blend of talent and sheer determination, broke free from the shackles of history. And in a thrilling climax that sent the nation into euphoria, Murray conquered Wimbledon's grass once more in 2016, reaffirming his status as the first British man in 77 years to lift the coveted trophy. A hawk called Rufus keeps the pigeons away at Wimbledon. Amidst the hustle and bustle of London, even the tranquil grounds of Wimbledon are not immune to the fluttering wings of pigeons. 
However, the All England Club has an extraordinary solution to ensure these feathered intruders do not disrupt the players' performances. Meet Rufus, the hawk with a noble purpose. With his piercing gaze and commanding presence, Rufus, a majestic Harris hawk, takes to the skies above Wimbledon, standing guard against the pesky pigeons. This aerial enforcer is no ordinary bird. He is a highly trained predator, adept at deterring the local pigeons from invading the hallowed tennis courts. As Rufus gracefully circles the skies, he sends a clear message to the pigeons. This is Wimbledon territory and they are not welcome. His presence alone is enough to keep the birds at bay, ensuring that the players can focus on their game without any unwelcome distractions. 54,250 tennis balls are used during Wimbledon. As the excitement of Wimbledon fills the air, it's not just the players and fans who contribute to the grandeur of the tournament. A staggering 54,250 tennis balls take center stage, ensuring that every serve, every volley, and every powerful shot is met with perfection. To maintain the pristine quality of the balls, they are diligently replaced every seven to nine games. This meticulous process ensures the players have the best equipment to showcase their skills and talents on the prestigious grass courts. But there's more to this game than meets the eye. Behind the scenes, a temper-controlled haven awaits these fuzzy spheres. Yes, you heard it right, a refrigerator. Wimbledon takes no chances when it comes to keeping the tennis balls in tip-top shape. The cool environment helps maintain their balance and integrity, ensuring that they perform at their best during the intense matches. In the tournament's colorful history, there was a time when white tennis balls took center stage. However, Wimbledon soon realized that innovation was necessary to enhance the viewing experience for the millions of fans around the world. The switch to vibrant yellow balls was a stroke of genius, making it easier for viewers to follow the action, especially on television. There you have it, 10 facts you didn't know about Wimbledon. What interests you about Wimbledon? Let us know in the comments section below. That'll be all for today's video. Thanks for staying tuned. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and notification bell so that you can always get to watch more amazing videos like this. See you in the next video.